How are we looking? We good? Are we there? Did it happen? Somebody give me a uh, plus one in the... Uh... Let me know if we're in. I think we're good. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, so I've been sitting here tying my shoes, talking for like five minutes. <laughs> Liam, thank you so much for saying that. I'm I'm so stoked to hear it. Honestly, I can't tell you what that means. It's uh, it's it's rad that you've gotten so much out of the stuff we've been doing here. And and truthfully, like when you make all these videos and do all this stuff, you kind of just make it and put it out into the world. And I mean, sometimes you're sitting on a live stream talking to yourself for <laughs> for a couple minutes, but. But truthfully, like you put this stuff out and you don't really know where it's going to go or who's going to see it or how it's going to impact them. So that means a lot for you to say that. I appreciate it a lot. So cheers for that. Thanks, everybody, for for being here. Good morning, Mom. Uh, I'm stoked to... Yeah, it's cool. It's a good feeling when hard work actually means something to someone. So, yeah, it takes a lot of work to do everything. <laughs> so it's always good that... It pays off. There's always, you know, you just never really know. You never know. And if I were to just, I don't know, it's, it's, the thing is, the most vocal people on the internet are not often the ones that are saying positive things. And so to hear positive things that are meaningful, like, goes double as far, I think. I don't know. Um, oh yeah, today's my, today's my last day being sick. I, uh, I've been like fighting this really weird cold and, uh, it's definitely not COVID or anything. <laughs> I love you guys too. I'm actually at a good place. Although there are definitely some points this summer when, when, uh, when, when people just, were pile like especially when the videos were going like crazy on YouTube Shorts, man. Some of the comments I made the mistake of looking in the section that was like the restricted comments, and whew, that was brutal. <laughs> Good point, Scub. Good point. Uh, favorite bike is this one right here. Although today I'm going to send a message to Oscar the the welder. And we may be starting on the titanium version of that bike with a few little tweaks. And with any luck, that will be my favorite bike. But I would say the Hex is, is there. So the, the changes that we're making, we're going to make a titanium version of this bike. And we're going to make the head tube uh, half a degree steeper. But we're going to make the top tube a little bit longer. And so the wheelbase will effectively stay the same because it'll just go like, bloop, like that. So, uh, thanks, Josh. So, appreciate it. So, oh yeah, the Makuto. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I have like a favorite comp bike yet, though. Like, I rode a Krukers briefly in Bentonville, and I think it. I think it must take a lot of getting used to because right out of the gate, I was not that comfortable with it. I, uh, I, I, I expect I was going to get on and be like, ah, yeah, here we go. And it just, something about it just felt weird. I don't know if it was like the super high bottom bracket or what it was, but it just like something wasn't right for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, Bentonville, Arkansas. So there was a U.S. Um, sort of like a UCI round there that a bunch of people came through. And, uh, yeah. So I rode one there because there were a bunch of them. And yeah. All right. I'm not here to. Oh, I haven't seen your flat surges, but I'm here for it. Um, we can do we can do more surge stuff today. I was thinking maybe we'd work on wheel swaps a little bit. I don't know what you guys want to do. Or or on J Band come up into anything else you want to work on or or whatever. Um, I kind of moved a couple things around here. Just, uh, worry, have a good one, man. Thanks for being here. Um, just 
stoked. Mountain bike rider. Thanks, man. All right, let's do wheel swaps. Um, okay. We'll do red helmet. Now we've got a bunch of extra helmets because of this whole... Uh, Liam, same here. It's dumping rain. I actually get the, the happiest when it rains because it makes me feel like this place is worth having. When it's sunny and nice outside, I feel kind of silly riding in a warehouse. But uh, on, a, on a cold day, when it's rainy and gross outside, it makes it worthwhile. Cool. Okay. We can do that too. Um, gloves. Gloves. <clears throat> oh, so... I was saying uh, briefly, but I started the Damon Watson power program yesterday. So I've got a squat rack and bar in the house. And uh, I basically gave him my one rep maxes for all this stuff. And then he gave me this 12 week program. And uh, I'm super curious to see, like if I can, if I can get even like 1% of his power, I'll be stoked. I'll be able to jump so high. <laughs> All right, J-Bank, let's do, let's do some back move stuff. Uh, <laughs> the hex in the skate park is um, not bad, actually. Uh, the TMS that we built up, I think, is going to be better because it's got a little bit heavier gear, and it's got a uh, it's got a shorter stem on it. But this actually did pretty well in the skate park. It wasn't not bad. But I would not do it on a comp bike. I would be terrified to do that on a comp bike. One second, one second. Let's see. Let's see what we're working with. Okay. Yeah, this... Uh, I think we're clear yet. Yeah, okay. No more ghost cup. We can fix that. I've got the, I've got the setting. <laughs> we can switch back to it. All right. Um, back wheel hops. Actually, let me just get a little bit more warm. We had a GoPro uh, chest mount for a while there, and I made a little thing where it was like down in the corner, and you could kind of see what I was seeing, but there was just like a slight delay. Maybe we should bring that back. I've got the GoPro right here, but there was like one piece of software that I had to use to get it to work. Whew. All right, I think we're good. We, uh, we did a family uh, Halloween outfit last night. If you want to see it, it's on my Instagram. Um, on like my real life Instagram, not the Super Rider one. And uh, we did Harry Potter as a family. My little guy was Harry Potter, with, like the little scar and stuff. And uh, I was Dumbledore. And uh, the joke last night, I was having a having a beverage, and I was like, too many of these, and I'll be Stumbledore. <laughs> so uh, thankfully. Thankfully, that's not the case. <clears throat> Ross, I'm super down to ride. I don't know, uh, I'm not sure how far you are from Portland, Oregon, but I'm always down to ride pretty much anytime with anybody. Honestly, like, 
yeah, riding with people is the best way to progress and yeah, just, you know, you can actually send it a little bit and have somebody there just in case things go wrong. Like I'm probably not riding at the top of my peak level ever in this place because I'm usually by myself. And uh, we learned that one the hard way. <laughs> All right. I'll just some back wheel hops. Um, i trying to think of the, the easiest way to conserve energy on the back wheel. Oh, whitefish, sick. Okay. Okay, bank. I would say uh, I would say the biggest thing that I'm trying to keep in mind when I'm hopping in a circle like that is I'm trying to think about my body actually just moving up and down, and then my arms are actually doing the work to rotate. But I'm trying to keep the same point if I can, and I feel like <clears throat> I feel like that really kind of helps me conserve energy because I'm just hopping up and down instead of like putting everything into it. Like that little tweak with the bars is just enough, right? <coughs> Liam, as long as they don't murder me. <laughs> yeah, I would say, uh, I would say smaller hops but also just, I would go back to this, uh, I would say try to keep your body in the same place and let your hands do the work, right? So, so not using like your entire body to do it, but just using this motion to turn. The other thing I would go back to is the the original movement where you're on your back wheel and you just do the 90 degree turn to your to two tires, this one helps you get this movement to lock in. Um, I don't feel like I'm letting the front end fall. But if you haven't, go back and practice this right here. So hop just one time on your back wheel and then from your back wheel, drop to two tires. This movement actually helps you figure out how to turn. It's kind of weird, but you just go back hop and then <clears throat> it's a good way to like get the snap. And because you're just landing in two tires, you're gonna have plenty of room to like make it. That one is that's the same movement that you want to be doing to get this motion to happen. It's such a good one to have. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. <laughs> I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Yeah, we've got, I mean, so now that it's winter, I'm kind of in a weird spot because I was in the middle of doing this uh, steel shootout, but I need to go, uh, <laughs> I need to go, I need to go outside and ride those three bikes, but it's raining and cold now. So I'm pretty much back in the, in the shred spot. And uh, I, so yeah, it's like now we gotta do a bunch of, uh, I wanna go back and, and do a couple more tutorial videos that are like wheel swaps and a few other things. So nice, Terrences, nice. <laughs> Extremely low bars. <clears throat> okay, so so first thing, hop in one spot. Second thing, go back to the 90. Make sure to uh, so make sure that when you're doing that hop to 90 that you that you can you see it where I'm rotating my handlebars this way right before I do the hop? That part is the part that you want. That's where you're getting like, that's what's making you hop 90 basically. 
don't know if I can do it the other way. Can I? I probably can. I don't know. Wait, the the hop to ninety in both ways, or or hopping in the back wheel both ways. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> I didn't actually know I could do that. <laughs> it was almost easier that way. That's weird. Okay, and then. Farm boy, have you uh, have you done uh, grinding on the rims yet? Least number. Let's find out. Probably. I don't know. Well, technically one, I guess, but let's try. Maybe this is cheating. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Like seven? Seven-ish? Seven or eight? Honestly, like, <laughs> yeah, farm boy, I get that one. It's a, uh, it's a pretty big commitment to go from, for, like, grinding rims like that. Better to do it if you're like around somebody who's done it before, or have it just have it done by someone like a shop or whatever, like a, you know, tardy bikes or wherever you're at. <clears throat> um, what else do I want to say about back wheel hops? I don't know. I'm trying to think about where I'm looking. Um, oh, trial shops in the UK, uh, FXN, that's the one. So uh, go there, find Sean, tell him I sent you. Sean Goddard is the guy you want to talk to. Find that guy. <laughs> they will grind your rims. They actually run a. Uh, they actually run a competition series that has like a hundred riders in it too. You basically live in the best country for trials right now. Congratulations. <laughs> but honestly, like, um, even if you're, even if you don't live close to where Sean is, he's probably one of the most connected uh, trials rider people in the UK, and he'd be able to sort you out really easily. But he's the homie for sure. He's helped me connect with some people over there too. Pretty cool. Um, I think the website is FXN Global. I think. I think. So we want to confirm that. Or maybe it's FXN Doc Global. But they he would absolutely grind your rims if you took the, the bike in, or he'd connect you with somebody that Yeah. They also have a uh, they have an app where where they show you can like tag riding spots or something like that too. I forget. But uh yeah, it's a really cool shop. He's real tight with Charlie Rolls and all those guys too. Okay, um, 
wheel swaps slash up to front. So, actually, let me move this. One second. Make a loud noise real quick. One second. I bet, uh, I bet FX10 could probably sort you out with a bike too, like a proper trials bike. They've got all those um, Onzas over in the UK. It's like sort of like their entry level mod bike, which would be a good thing. If you're riding BMX, you could cross over pretty easily. Okay, so up to front and wheel swap. Here's the thing. <coughs> a lot of people want to learn how to jump up to their front wheel, which I totally get. It looks cool. People jump higher because of it. But once you get here, then what? And we could teach you the basics of how to get to that point, but if you can't wheel swap, you're hosed, basically. <laughs> so I want to teach wheel swaps so that uh, when you get to your front wheel, you can actually do it. Maybe this is, maybe I should be teaching wheel swaps on the lower box. This might be a little high for repeated effort. Yeah, let's do wheel swaps on the lower box. Just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing that first try if you haven't done them before. Let me move this out of the way. I changed my mind. Okay, so the thing about wheel swaps is when you first learn them, and even for a long time, there's a, the most important thing is that you're not going to do it on a dime. You're gonna, want, you're gonna have a space like this, and you should really just focus on that rolling motion between your front tire being down to your back tire being down. And then the better you get, the let's call it contact patch of that space, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And if you watch the guys who are, so I'm speaking two-dimensionally smaller, right? And uh, if you watch the guys that are doing it on very, very small points, you have to go 3D with it and notice that they're actually pulling their bike next to them to make that thing happen. Right? It's not just immediately like dink, dink, in very rare scenarios. So we're going to work on the 2D version and then we can think about 3D after that. <clears throat> An up to front of Bubica. I had this one little trick that I used to do. I don't even know if I can do it anymore. But uh, it could be like just like a, like a, I don't know. Might be 
too low. Okay. All right, wheel swaps. So you can do it two ways. It's probably it's probably easiest to. Did I lose the light? Oh. <laughs> okay. So there's two ways you could learn the wheel swap. You could roll into it with a little bit of speed to keep the motion going. You could do it from a standstill. What's good, Sylvester? Hey, I saw your note to the Inspired guys. Cool that they're working on a carbon bike. I could have, I can imagine that. I'm glad that they're not working on a titanium bike because I am. <laughs> They've been so helpful, that Mark guy's really, that's the same guy that emailed me all that stuff about the, the uh, arcade. He's, he knows his stuff for sure. Okay, so you can come into a wheel swap I'll do, I'll do both versions and then we can decide which one we want to work on. Uh, the static one is a little bit harder, but at this point you, you guys probably have your endos kind of in place. So maybe it's totally fine. But let me show you what it looks like with rolling and then let me show you what it looks like with uh, static. It's essentially just an endo to get it started. So you just grab some front brake and that's really the first half of the move. <clears throat> we'll do rolling first. Okay, rolling just like wheelie. Grab your front brake. Put it down. Same thing here. You could learn this on flat ground too. Um, doesn't matter. Static, same thing. You'd be here, you almost go up to a front wheel hop. And then once you get there, what you wanna do is rotate the bike around where you already are. So I'm over the front and then I'm slipping the bike like this. And again, we're not worried about the contact patch right now. Don't worry about that to get started. Just worry about having one tire to the other tire, right? <clears throat> so, gosh, you really could learn this on flat ground. Maybe I should teach it on flat ground first. Um, Sylvester, we're doing, we're doing wheel swaps here. Maybe I should teach this on flat ground first, and then we can work on obstacles. I think maybe that's better. Okay, <clears throat> let's do these on flat. <clears throat> so for this one I would go, if we were learning this on flat ground, I would go just a really slow pace and you can do it either grab your front brake endo or you can just lift your back wheel up. Either way is totally fine. It's probably easier to do it without the brake. Just lift your front, lift your back wheel up while you're rolling because then it keeps that momentum going, right? Because we want to have a little, we want it to be a fluid motion. You want to have like this, and if you grab your brake, it's not necessarily fluid. It's going to be a bit more choppy. <coughs> so maybe try. Just try like lifting up your back wheel. And as it comes down, just rotate the bike.
So I'm not using my brakes at all. Just lift the back wheel. What's good, Cesar? It does feel, <laughs> it does feel about the same as a slow manual. And it, yeah, you kind of end up in the slow manual because <clears throat> you're on that back wheel balance point pretty quickly. But I think that if you do that rolling, it's better than if you grab the front brake endo style. Maybe not. Let's find out. <clears throat> I think you're going to have better luck. I think you're going to have better luck um, if you do it without the brake, just because you're going to, it's going to be a, a smoother motion. And that's, that's actually what we're working on. We're not working about getting up on the front wheel super high or on the back wheel super high. You're just working on this transfer between the two and this kind of rocking motion. And <clears throat> the way you could kind of think of it is when you lift the back wheel up, it's like setting, you know, like on a pendulum when you like pull the thing back and then send it, it's creating the momentum so that when the back wheel comes down, it helps you kind of lean back into that manual where it's going whew. hopefully this makes sense I think it makes sense feels right I think you could do the brake version but you can see it's a little bit uh, it's more at that point it's not about the back wheel it's about your front front brake modulation you know like how slow you let go of the brake for it to go whew. and you're not really focused then on the rocking motion um, farm boy, you could, you could do this on a 24 inch, I think maybe, well, you could do this actually on a BMX bike pretty easily. In fact, a lot of people manual, like they get into manuals by doing this. It's almost like a nolly style into it, but try that first. So you're rolling along. that's a good start. So <clears throat> again, remember what we're actually working on is the, the switch between those two. Sure, I'll, Liam, I'll do it with a break real quick. <clears throat> okay. So break, it's the same thing where you're lifting the back wheel up, doing that scoop to lift it up. But I think that's gonna be, I think that's gonna actually be harder to do because it's more, at that point it becomes more about your front brake modulation where you, you gotta let it off smoothly and then do that, that rocking motion. So it's actually an extra step if you're adding the brake in. Cause you can see, you can see that I was doing it totally fine without, and that was really focusing in on that, that rolling motion to the back wheel. So you see like while we're working on this, we're actually not, <clears throat> we're actually not, um, we're not focused on what the contact patch is, where we're doing the transfer. We're just focused on getting that back wheel to, to pull back, like the swing analogy we used, right? Think about it like a swing set or whatever you want to do. But you basically just pull back with the back wheel lifting up a little bit. And then as that comes down, you transfer your weight and you're on your back wheel. And that's the motion that you wanna get comfortable doing. 
And then as you get into, once you start feeling confident with that, you could then add in the, uh, you could then add in the, the brake. And obviously the brake is gonna come in handy when you jump up to front wheel onto stuff. But again, like you wouldn't necessarily even need it for getting onto. <clears throat> I think you could learn a back wheel lift in, uh, I think with the, with the tutorial video on this channel, you could probably learn it in a day or less, maybe a couple hours at most. Um, once you get that scooping motion with your back wheel, or sorry, with your back foot, and you realize you have to point down, back, and up, like if you can do this, no brakes here, just practice this motion, you'll have it really quick, I think. I think you'll pick it up really quickly. But there is a full, there's like at least one, maybe two videos on this channel that are completely dedicated to getting the back wheel to come off the ground. I would start there. Uh, and that will help you a lot when it comes into this wheel swap and a bunch of other stuff, pivots and endos and all kinds of stuff. That is a great skill to have, being able to lift your back wheel off the ground with no brakes. Like the higher you can do it without brakes, the, the better it is, you know? <clears throat> of course, of course. So when you're going on to obstacles like this and you want to do a wheel swap, it's the same exact thing. The only difference is that here when I'm on flat ground, I only have to get my back wheel up off the ground a couple inches to get the motion going. When you're going on to a ledge like this, your back wheel has to come up higher than the actual ledge because the ledge is now the flat ground, right? And so your back wheel has to get up to a certain point so that you can then execute that motion if, you're on, if your front wheel is on top of the, the ledge. So <clears throat> let me demonstrate that. I'll try it with no brakes once and then we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Yeah, yeah, so J-Bank, spot on. When your front wheel is up on something, to get it to go not even, but then even higher, it's like, in reality, that's, that's a big difference, you know? But I do also feel like when your front wheel is on something, you're over the bars, and so it makes it a little bit easier to keep going over the bars, you know? But I think, to start learning wheel swaps, flat ground, no brakes, right? Zero brakes, get that back wheel off the ground, and then ch -ch -ch. This motion takes a little bit of finesse to get right. And of course, grab your back brake, or have your, have your hand covering the back brake, because what can sometimes happen is that you get a little bit too much momentum and your back wheel gets going, you know? <clears throat> so think about that too, make sure your brakes are covered because <laughs> this motion when you get it right it actually moves pretty quickly it goes Ch -ch -ch. but I think about the whole thing like this giant swing of like lifting the back wheel switching onto the front wheel it's just I feel like the the bike is kind of swinging around me sort of so that's that's the basics for getting started on wheel swaps and it just takes a little bit of time to get super confident of switching between the two but what I'm doing when I go up to front on a box like this one over here is the same thing. I'm getting my back wheel up and then I'm, then I'm doing that same switching motion. So I've locked my front wheel in place and then I go 
to back wheel. And then people go faster and faster and faster after that. Sweet. I'm glad that was glad that was helpful. So uh, let me push this back in place. I'll demonstrate again what it looks like when you go up onto something to front wheel because I think that's kind of the next the next thing that you're gonna do. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> anytime you're, I mean that that's really like that's it, right? Like balance points and getting out of the way of the bike in your own body is. 99% of all this stuff, right? How do I give the bike power but stay out of its way? And I think, you know, like the stuff that I'm doing now with Damon where I'm building power, I've already figured out how to get out of the way. And so if I apply power to it, my technique or my, my overall riding will have like a huge leap forward, you know? That's what I'm kind of counting on is that like, I've taken technique to this point, but my power is still down here. So I can bring my power up here. My collective riding will be way higher. <clears throat> um, I don't know if this is a tip or not, but I mean, it's, whatever, but I don't know if it's useful, but Think also about making yourself, like making your shoulders and arms wide over the front, you know, just like you were balancing. Um, try to think about like spreading your elbows out a bit. Like when you're up on that front wheel, that may help just a little bit. It gives you a bit wider base to balance off of. <clears throat> Liam, you want me to wheel swap on the balance beam? <laughs> Might not end well. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it even, huh? Well, maybe. Yeah. I think, I think the thing I'd be most sketched out about on the rail is that it's hard to keep it in place. <laughs> we had some problems with that when I was gapping before, where it was, it, it moves a little bit. Okay. So <clears throat> there's kind of, there's kind of two different wheel swaps or up to front. Some of the guys jump and they put their wheel basically right here and jam it in jam it in like this, and then they rotate up, which is terrifying to get just right. But it's definitely the way that you can get the highest with this. But for most people learning it, they're not going as high as the big box over there, which is, that has been done before by another rider, not me. The way that, I'm, the, the way that I t traditionally wheel swap and how most people would if they were going up onto uh, well, Hold on, Rodrigo. <laughs> Stoked. Uh, so the way that most people would go onto the box like this or below, you're actually gonna come down on top of it. So you'd be up here, and then your front wheel will land. You'll grab a bit of front brake. Do exactly what we said we were gonna do, where we lift your back wheel up on top of the... Uh, 
above the, the line of the ledge, and then we do the wheel swap from there. <coughs> that's the, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's why, that's like the main reason why I'm, I've been reticent to do front wheel up to front, because if you miss and you go too low, it's sketchy. But for stuff that's like this height and lower, you can jump over it and land on top and then do your wheel swap. And that's probably, that's probably the safest way and it's the most realistic way that you're gonna learn stuff. Because if, you have, if you're just learning it, you're gonna start small. And also, you know, if you're just getting wheel swaps, if you're just getting on it, then boxes like Scrappy and Marge size are probably the way to start, you know? So now that, now that we've talked about the wheel swap itself, let me show you about the front wheel placement when you're doing the, I don't know how to call this, like the up and over, or like the, uh, la the landing on top version. I don't know, we need a, we need a name for this part of it. So I'm thinking about like what, what would be the name for going up to front but landing your front wheel here instead of here. Like a like a secondary approach, you know? I'm trying to think of the right way to, to phrase it. Alright, let me let me actually look up this time. <coughs> <laughs> Up to flat. That works. You guys have named a lot of stuff in here and I'm pretty okay with that. Kind of tempted to paint everything back to the regular color instead of leaving it green. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Like the Mario stuff was cool, but it was actually the most disliked content I've ever posted on my channel as well, which is kind of weird. I think, uh, oh, what's good, Mark? How's it going, man? Stoked. Philippines in the house. We got, we have quite the international crew today. This is, I mean, not that we, it usually is, but it's, yeah, everybody's here today. This is awesome. Stoked. Sweden. Oh, Liam. <laughs> Stoked. <laughs> it is different. Like, uh, it's kind of trippy to see the, the Mario blocks and you like watch it back, you know? Just green in here. Like being on the set of Avatar or something. Oh, well, you came in perfect timing, Mark. We're, so one thing, if you don't use the brakes, Oh, uh, the, the shorts. It was like, I think it's because they sent it to a bunch of gamers and they're like, I don't, I don't want to see bike riding on my channel. I want to see more button mashing, please. I don't think, I think now when people dislike stuff, it's just like, it's like on Spotify where they're like, 
I don't, I don't want to listen to Imagine Dragons. <laughs> you know? What's good, Ben? Yeah. Yeah, J-Bank, this is definitely how I would recommend starting it. Is, uh, is just rolling up and getting that. And honestly, like, you're not gonna need like the big up. But yeah, I think this is the right way to do it. <clears throat> Cause the thing is, we just learned, we just talked about wheel swaps and you already know how to pedal up onto boxes like this. So in terms of finding a way to start getting comfortable with it, like all, all due respect to Ali, but his tutorial was basically like, Find something that's this high or taller and jump to put your front wheel on the corner and then it's like, you know. I think this is the right way to, to get people started with it. <clears throat> yeah. Liam, I think so. I think we could probably do a, a live stream, although it's raining now for the next couple of months, so. So the next thing I would probably do, J-Bank, is actually do the jump up to front. Uh, and you could do it a couple different ways, too. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way I could demonstrate. Yeah. I honestly like this stuff is most of what you want to be want to be doing um, just to get comfortable because even like that last one I got a little bit in the back seat when I got up the back wheel <clears throat> but uh I'll probably do that and then probably do like a pedal into it or like a I don't want to do. I guess the next thing you could do. <clears throat> trying to think about hopping directly up to front on something. I think that's probably it. Because now you're making a static move on something, right? I think the next point after that would be three pedal. Remember I was doing those like three pedal to, uh, to hop up stuff on my mod bike maybe a year ago? I would probably do that motion next. So, <clears throat> and instead of going to back wheel, I just go to front wheel. Do you remember that one where it's uh, I think I can do it. <clears throat> I'll probably do that, but up to front, you know? But I think if, uh, I would probably do, like, how do you get to your front wheel the safest, quickest, most effective way that you can repeat a bunch of times. And building up that confidence of, like, what happens if I land with all of my energy on the front? But, truthfully, I don't know if you're going to really use this move until you get something like that high anyway, where you would be jumping up to it. Because, <clears throat> ultimately... If you're riding a ledge like this and you wanted a wheel swap, you don't need to do a big hop up, you know?
So when you come into it rolling, no break, you get like almost this little boost, like this rah! So just be careful and make sure you're covering the brake when you're doing that. Up onto something with a little bit of speed because you can carry it. You can really carry it, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Cover, oh yeah, sorry, cover the rear brake. Because the whole thing, you have that, that, especially when you're going up onto something and your back wheel gets higher and you have momentum, that swap can go so fast the back wheel can shoot out. So just make sure you're covering it. I've landed on the back seat like twice uh, in the back seat. <clears throat> yeah, so cover the brake. You may even feather it just a little bit depending on like how fast you're coming through. But if you're not using your front brake and you do that at speed, the, the transition goes really, really quick. So just make sure that you're covering your back brake. Because uh, if you get it perfectly right after maybe like struggling to learn it and then you get it once perfect, it goes twice as fast. <laughs> and <clears throat> to, <clears throat> sorry. Um, it's a, uh, it's kind of a shock. It's a surprise when it moves that quickly. It just goes like, Zhoop. so just be ready for it. <laughs> Oh yeah, cover means keep your finger over the brake like this. Good call, Terrence. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it would be cool to have some pallets in here, actually. I mean, we kind of have like, whatever, but it'd be cool to like add one pallet, pallet. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully that was good. Hopefully that was, uh... oh, Alex, sick. What bike are you getting? <clears throat> oh, Liam, we'll probably wrap it up here in a minute or two. Oh, sick. So curious to see what you think of that bike. <clears throat> That's so rad. Stoked. Alex, any questions that you have with any trial stuff? That's, that's exactly why we do this live stream. So today it was wheel swaps up to front, but anything you want, just come in, let us know, and uh, we can demonstrate it. That's the whole reason why we have this live stream here is so that I can just, I can put the videos out, but you'll always have another question or a little detail or whatever that you want to know you know, uh, more and more about each one of the techniques in depth. And so 
the main goal of doing live streams is just to make it better for everyone so they can watch the video and then come join us, ask questions, get answers, take it back to the riding. Uh, if you guys aren't already, the Discord channel that we have is pretty much this crew plus maybe a hundred more people. So uh, uh, definitely if you're not in our Discord yet, now would be a good time. I think the link is in our description here. But uh, this whole crew is there. and Like a lot of people put videos in there of stuff that they're working on so that we can all kind of have a chance to help them as well. So that's kind of the goal of everything we're doing right now is just trying to help everybody get the basics down, get up to speed and you know, the, the first, the first hump of getting into trials is really hard. And so the more we can do to help you kind of get it locked in, you know, you'll, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mark, I'm so stoked that you joined, man. That's so, so awesome. We've been doing these for a little while on Twitch, but I think YouTube is just the place, you know? All right. <clears throat> well, I feel like, uh, that's a good place to end. So, so if this is your first stream, we, we go every Tuesday and every Thursday at this exact same time. And, uh, and yeah, come join us Thursday. Feel free, like in discord, if there's something you want to work on Thursday, let us know in there. Otherwise meet us here and ask away and, uh, we'll set it up and make it happen for you. So, uh, thanks guys for being here. Thanks for, for joining and, uh, yeah, stoked. Um, we'll speak to you guys soon.